Well, welcome to my garage. I'm Martin Ray and I'm secretary of the Singer Owners Club. Now, one of the technical questions we get asked most frequently is about the valve or camshaft timing on the 1930s cars, which of course includes the nine horsepower and one and a half litre Le Mans and all the nine sports variants. Having had to do a major rebuild of my 1933 9 Coupes engine, I thought I'd make a video of how to time the engine in the hope that it's clearer than the written articles that have appeared in our club magazine over the years. Now I am aware of an alternative method than the one I'm going to show you, but I've always found this method to be the most accurate. Obviously having the engine out of the car makes the job a whole lot easier and without the gearbox you can easily see the top dead centre mark and the additional marks that I've added to show the inlet open position and the exhaust closing position. These vary slightly depending on the engine being a Le Mans or a Sports but the exact data is given in the Singer manual. I would just stress that this is setting the valve timing on a new build engine so at this stage the top timing chain is not in position so the crankshaft is not yet connected to the camshaft. Step one is to check that the valve clearances are correct. Four thou on the inlets, six thou on the exhausts. Step two is to check that the flywheel is correctly fitted to the crankshaft with the top dead centre mark bringing pistons one and four to the top and is not fitted 180 degrees out. Then set the crankshaft to the inlet valve opening position using your marks on the flywheel. For this particular engine it is one and seven eighths of an inch before top dead centre. And remember, from the back of the engine, rotation is anti-clockwise. Step three is to set the camshaft such that the inlet valve on number four, or six if you're working on a six cylinder, is at the point of opening. Now this could be done with the use of a dial indicator, but I use a method described in the Singer Hunter manual. With the valve on its seat, oscillating the spring cap is very difficult, but the moment the valve lifts, the spring and spring cap will rotate. So, keep trying to oscillate the cap as you very slowly rotate the camshaft and the moment the cap rotates is the point you're looking for. So I'll rotate the camshaft until the valve cap can rotate and I think it's that point there. I hope you can see that. Well, step four is to fit the top chain wheel and to get the timing chain tight on the drive side without moving the crankshaft or the camshaft. But before I fit the chain, I'll try and demonstrate how the design of the chain wheel allows quite fine positional adjustment. Now, if I slip this card behind the wheel, you can see I've traced the outline of a few of the teeth. Now if I rotate the chain wheel to, the, to locate on the next set of holes, you'll see that the teeth will move round one sixth of the tooth pitch. There we go. And again. And 
and so on and so on. It's necessary to hold the tensioner sprocket back to give enough chain to work with and because I haven't got three hands I have this large clip to do the job. So with the chain taut on the drive side you can see the sprocket holes are nowhere near the pegs so I have to rotate the chain wheel within the chain until I can get a fit so by doing that and again it's pretty good that's very tight on the drive side and it slips neatly onto the pegs and if I remove the clip the tensioner tensions the chain. To check the accuracy I'll rotate the engine to the point that the inlet valve on number four begins to open again which is there. and onto the exhaust closing position which I find using the same method except this time it's the moment the spring cap stops rotating and it's there I won't pretend that I was that accurate at the first try but the vernier adjustment of the top chain wheel should enable you to get very close to perfection. However, if you can't get both marks spot on, try to get the inlet opening and exhaust closing points proportionally located either side of top dead centre so that one is not advanced or retarded compared to the other. Finally, don't forget to do up the tensioner stop fully in and then back off half a turn and do up the lock nut. Otherwise, the chain is very likely to jump a tooth and you'll have to start again. I hope that's helped and thanks for watching.